very good afternoon everyone my talk is focused on human animal conflict large carnivores in the landscape this talk i have structured based on our own research experience and information whatever is available on the google either from the print media digital media or scientific publications if i talk about human animal conflict or conflict episodes so the topic actually it sounds very sensitive and challenging as it's been very dynamic day by day even after implementation of lots of conservation strategies and prevention measures human animal conflict defines experience of human existence and people and wildlife have lived in proximity to each other historically it is not restricted with one or two species or any particular landscape or in any particular ecosystem all species from terrestrial to aerial species trend is not looking to be decreasing in any range or area of human wildlife conflict as i have gone through the research papers while i was preparing this talk human animal conflict commonly occurs between peoples and humans particularly those who share the immediate boundaries with protected areas It has become a common phenomenon throughout the ranges of entire wildlife the term human wildlife conflict has gained popularity among the scientific community and has evolved into an umbrella term which includes all kinds of interactions with all species in association with human beings according to iucn 2020 publications or a report human animal conflict refers to struggles that emerge when the presence or behavior of wildlife or animals poses an actual or perceived direct and recurring threat to human interest or needs leading to disagreements between groups of people and negative impacts on people or say wildlife human animal conflict from the ecological point of view occurs due to special overlap between activities of humans and wildlife it affects when their interest like animal behavior or human need encounters especially where both populations are expanding natural resources or natural habitats are shrinking due to land encroachment land transformation spread of agriculture farming and developmental projects from the news of print media or digital media and the rising number of scientific publications on uh, human wildlife conflict or wildlife human conflict curious to know what is exactly happening at the national and international level that curiosity took me to google i said certain phrases as human animal conflict then animal human conflict human large cat conflict large cats human conflict human leopard conflict leopard human conflict and simultaneously in the case of tiger and lion 
This search was done on Google Scholar search engine. What I found in return, when I put these phrases, these phrases filtered out with a huge number of scientific publications, which are somewhere termed as human animal conflict or animal human conflict. But still one question is left behind, which term, which phrase should be used to address this conflict problem between humans and wildlife. At the national and international level, more than 2 lakhs, and at the national level, approximately 3 lakhs uh, publications or uh, Google referencing uh, I have got uh, returned back by putting these phrases. But what these uh, phrases uh, have brought out for me, like in the first case, if I go to a uh, world graph, so human animal conflict, uh, it is showing in a large number of conflict case studies which are published scientifically in uh, given uh, less time, proportionally less time which has been taken by the Google Scholar to return back certain studies which are named or published uh, using the term human-animal conflict in the comparison of animal-human conflict. In the animal human conflict, if you can notice the line that is showing number of studies, scientific publications, and the columns are showing search time. So in the case of animal human conflict, number of case studies are less, although the time has been taken more in comparison of the phrase used human animal conflict. The same thing if I compare at the national level, so difference is crystal clear. The time has been taken more in the case of human-animal conflict, but the published studies are returned back in less number. When I have used animal-human conflict at national level, so again time has been taken more, but published uh, published studies are less. So there is, you know, difference uh, in in mindset uh, and the severity of problem of human-animal conflict or human-wildlife conflict. If I go to cases which are belonging to a human-leopard conflict or say leopard-human conflict, so these uh, two phrases have provided me back the uh, almost similar number of cases uh, in almost uh, uh, simultaneously equal proportion of time which was taken uh, doing search of these publications. All number of cases are belonging to human leopard conflict or leopard human conflict are higher at the national level as well as at the international level. Although time uh, which was taken is proportionally less in comparison of studies which were returned back using animal-human conflict or human-animal conflict at national and international level. At the national level, if I go to human-lion conflict, you can clearly notice the number of cases are going highest, up to 60 cases just in 0 0.30 seconds or, point, uh, or 0.5 seconds. So, uh, this time, uh, we're turning me back the published case studies which are belonging to, which are published by the title of Human Lion Conflict are going quite high at the national level instead of the title Lion Human Conflict. So, whatever studies are published with the title Human Lion Conflict are very, very low in India as well as at international level. I think these graphs can connect you uh, with the lecture of Dr. Sandeep Kumar, where he has mentioned that if there is a line, so there is a line. So maybe this is the influence of people on this species, which is a keystone species of the deer ecosystem. The search was not ended till here. Now, then again, I did Google and I found a very interesting review study. 
which was done uh, using Google Scholar, again, search engine and Scopus search engine. Means the papers were published in the Scopus cited journals and uh, whatever studies were uh, available in the Google search engine. Both the search engines have provided almost equally exponentially increasing trend of human animal conflict over the past 20 years. Conflict causes, in broad sense, are demographic, economic, institutional, and technological. But in order to make decisions best, to both humans as well as wildlife on how these two come in conflict, genuine factors, identification of exact factors, exact causes, and sources of these problems must be identified, to which I want to name as a conflict drivers. Many social and ecological, biological, behavioral factors are there which are influencing risk at various scales of the conflict. Human violence conflict typically doesn't occur at random, but patterns of conflict can be difficult to identify since it is a very complex, uh, uh, very complex exercise because of the complexity of inherent in wildlife behavior and ecology, human behavior, their activities, and challenges from the seasonal changes, land transformation, and other activities which are being done uh, by the human beings. Actually, conflict drivers include cost, which is caused by wildlife conservation. And such costs include human problems facing wildlife, or wildlife-related problems to local communities. In a set of human-induced problems facing wildlife, land transformation, habitat destruction, pollution of protected wildlife areas, wildlife exploitation are there, which have been identified as the primary factors. In another set of wildlife-related problems to local communities, there are factors which are uh, severely affecting this association of human and wildlife includes loss of access to legitimate and traditional rights, damage to crops and other properties, livestock degradation, risk posed to people's life through disease transmission, risk posed to people's life through attack by wildlife. If I talk about the risk posed to people's lives through disease transformation, uh, disease uh, transmission, so um, since the pandemic outbreak, a corona outbreak, the entire scientific community uh, is highly concerned and alert for disease spread. It is published in the research paper that the increasing human population and their uh, increasing activities uh, by encroaching natural sites, these problems are increasing or spilling over in the current time. There are about two lakhs villages located in and around forest. And the forest dependent population in India has been estimated to be approximately 275 million. So if the huge, such huge pressure of uh, uh, human population is existing on the natural sites of forested areas or uh, to use um, natural resources, so what kind of association could result uh, from these activities? It is not too difficult to understand. These are only the just straggling numbers, there may be many more. According to World Forest Report 2022, that indicates uh, that there could be an outbreak of almost uh, 15,000 diseases in coming next 50 years 
of their 10,000 viruses will be zoonotic diseases and transmit silently, which increasing the number of spillovers in the next coming 50 years. And I also have mentioned certain diseases, although I'm not specialized uh, in this part of uh, the conflict factor, but just to make people sensitized and aware what is happening in the real world, in the current world, I have put this slide. Many wildlife species are reservoir for pathogens and zoonotic and factor-borne diseases, pose considerable risk to livestock, human, and wildlife health. Examples of important zoonotic diseases outbreaks include very known Ebola, avian influenza, coronavirus, cholera, babesiosis, canine distemper virus, and recent recent episode of lumpy skin disease. If I go for this lumpy skin disease, I just did Google that how many livestock or uh, individuals were found infected in the Gujarat state as the dog is basically focused on the landscape of Gujarat. So I found about uh, um, 2,000 livestock uh, are found infected with lumpy disease. We all know from the lecture of Dr. Sandeep Kumar that lions are depredating on the livestock. So it is not difficult to understand that relation, the transmission process of disease from one animal to the next animal. If I pick up the example of canine distemper virus, so um, again, uh, livestock are the uh, secondary key prey for the lions. Lions are spreading everywhere in the Saurashtra. Everywhere they are depredating on the livestock. If these infected individuals are taking attempt to kill or hunt or eat upon any livestock species and that individual is managing to escape from the attack and will again going to its herd, then what will happen? What would be consequences of that uh, lion and livestock individual interaction? There are many more examples. We all know that how many individuals of lions were found infected with the disease uh, canine distemper virus? Now I take you to the gay landscape. Although you all are very familiar uh, after the yesterday's talk, but uh, uh, I'll brief you about the wildlife. The 1400 square kilometer area of Gir National Park and Lion Sanctuary is rich in wildlife species including two large cats, Asiatic lion and common leopard. And a striped hyena is also existing there, which is making it a multi-predator ecosystem, along with other species of cats, reptiles, birds, and insects. This is the peripheral area of the landscape, uh, which is highlighted with the green colors and pink colors. Uh, this area is uh, falling on two districts, District Amreli with green and District Junagar with a uh, pink one. Both districts are uh, quite different uh, in the form of population, um, population sizes of human beings, uh, land use pattern, uh, livestock, husbandry processes and practices, and use of natural resources, and uh, the exercise or uh, practice of grazing livestock at the peripheral area of the Gil Land Sanctuary. As my interest of the research for today's talk is focused towards the large cat human conflict or human large cat conflict, I think uh, after discussion of the post slide, uh, it must have gone clear that. Uh, where we can name it as the large cat or uh, animal-human conflict or where we can name it human-animal conflict. So still I'm putting both terms that will make you crystal clear till the end of this lecture. As I told you that GEAR is uh, 
a last home of the population of Asiatic lion. Lions are existing over there in good numbers. The population has been safe from about a dozen number of individuals till today, about the seven. Gir is also accommodating simultaneously the huge population of common leopard. Both large cats are living together in the same ecosystem or say coexisting together by relying or sharing the same habitats and key prey species, cheetah, whereas other herbivore species like nilgai and sambar and primates and peafowls, all these species somewhere are contributing in the dietary spectrum of these two carnivores. But their diets are highly dominated by the contribution of cheetah. These two cats are also sharing a space together. Uh, whereas the home ranges of lepers have been uh, analyzed uh, small in sizes as it is having a good number of uh, uh, leopards in the gear. So many times I have seen the uh, identified individuals of lepers at their core zone of the home range are overlapping with the home range of other individuals of leopard. These uh, species no doubt coexisting together, but coexistence is next to impossible without using strategies, which is, which is being done by the medium-sized carnivore leopard. These are the strategies which leopard is using to coexist successfully in the gear ecosystem. I have... Uh, you know, lot of observations from the gear uh, since I have worked over there for a long period. And this observation I have put on this slide from the area Putni in the Western Gear. Uh, one female was identified over there and most of the sightings uh, we have done during the monitoring of the, uh, you know, ungulate sensors. During the monsoon season, once we are doing the monitoring, we found that leopard is on kill. We all, or my entire team, got stopped over there just to observe what will happen next. Then what we found, uh, as that uh, leopard has sensed the presence or approach of lions to that location, she started pulling that cheetah kill up on the tree. And that, that activity was uh, uh, also uh, held out by the male, uh, male leopard which was moving in the surrounding area. If you can notice at the bottom, uh, there is the male leopard which is just checking out that uh, the spray has been safely pulled up on the tree or not. And then quickly both leopards, they left the site when lions reached there. The other strategies which leopards are using in gear to make this coexistence successful, including um, Hiding of kills in big boulders, wearing kill under litters, and uh, sometimes they are hiding this kill in the dense thicket of lantern or something else, the low heighted shrub. If I go to human large carnivore conflict experience, which I have done using secondary data for the period of 2000 to 2011, so I found. Uh, this graph, by putting all the cases, were recorded by the forest department till 2000, uh, from 2001 to 2009. And since then, I had collected data from 2009 to 2012 during my research period. These cases are belonging to direct encounters of leopards uh, with the human beings or cases of livestock depredation by the leopards. Approximately 1,200 cases of leopards were recorded for the direct encounters from different locations. And the trends of both uh, factors, either the direct encounters or the livestock depredation, are showing consistently increasing pattern. As we have seen in the case of that review study where Google Scholar and Scopus Index Journals have produced approximately increasing trend for the uh, human leopard conflict studies or human wildlife conflict studies. These cases for the direct leopard and human encounters were very few, which were reported during 2001. But as uh, 
the period is increasing number of cases are also increasing and at the last they have reached up to 200 cases per year during 2011 to 12. In the case of livestock depredation, 2,500 cases of livestock depredation by the lepels were reported uh, from the farmers to the uh, forest department. And after reporting the uh, these uh, mishappenings or uh, these accidents between lepels and livestock, forest department used to visit that site for the examination investigation what has actually happened. And they then record the further data belonging to that uh, conflict episode. So these two factors consistently are increasing and highlighting the severity of conflict between leopard and humans. The same thing I have done for the uh, lion-human conflict. I have plotted number of cases in ills from 2001 to 2012. The dark green line that is belonging to a direct uh, lion human encounters that is flowing at the bottom, if you can notice, but the another line, light green one that is that is even starting from a very huge number, more than thousand, and again that is consistently increasing till 2009. From there, a slight decrease is reported from the graphical representation. We have all have heard many times in the last year's lecture that lions are depredating on the livestock in the entire Saurashtra. And if you will do, you know, Google uh, by putting this phrase lion human conflict, you will hardly find uh, pictures or say uh, information from the Google. But once you will put human lion conflict, you will get a huge number of information including the scientific publications and media reports. So this graph again showing a very, very heavy pressure of livestock depredation by lions on the farmers or local peoples are living around at the peripheral area of the landscape and definitely on the uh, forest staff or forest department too because uh, uh, the, um, you know, sustainability of uh, uh, these huge number of uh, livestock depredation is uh, definitely difficult to handle as these live or livestock depredation cases are somewhere subject to compensate as there are several schemes and policies in the return of livestock depredation by the lions. Now come back to again leopard. Whatever leopards we have seen were captured from the direct encounters, that is the serious problem from the gear. Approximately 1184 or 1200 leopards were rescued or trapped from the problem sites. Those total 1200 individuals were including cases or rescue of leopards, problem sites in the agriculture form, where 920 individuals were rescued from the agriculture fields. And the trend, which you can notice, the rescue of leopards from the agriculture fields is consistently increasing from 2004 to 12, because since 2005, uh, the process of translocation is in practice indeed, I think so. So um, since then, the forest department is maintaining a regular record of uh, uh, leopards rescue from the problem site. Next factor which I have identified or filtered out from my data that is leopards entry in the houses at the peri peripheral landscape or leopards entry at the watchtowers or the huts which farmers make in the agriculture fields to guard their field. About 74 leopards were rescued which were entered in the human houses or uh, these places where they need to be tranquilized first. Without tranquilization, their rescue is not possible. 
so this pain is uh, uh, moving high and low but since 2009 the trend is consistently moving upward where approximately 12 leopards were rescued in 2012 from the human houses for this a uh, rescue operation there is a need of the entire team from the rescue center or hospital including the veterinarian where uh, dr he para was there and he used to accompany us during these uh, rescue operations on the stress calls or uh, on the cases of leopard human encounters the next factor which i have identified that is leopards well falling these wells are established in the agriculture fields where uh, while they are moving running in the agriculture fields as uh, leopards are of you know uh, it is the generalist species and with the plasticity of behavior they move everywhere they visit everywhere and feed upon anything which they lie in the way so these leopards while they are moving in the uh, agriculture farms they fell down in the uh, agriculture walls uh, whatever uh, wells are established there for the irrigation purpose the trend is again uh, going low and high but uh, uh, since i have identified this uh, conflict drivers uh, the forest department has taken action and uh, has started taking precaution around this uh, uh, water wells by establishing parapet wall as i told you that there is uh, you know a kind of uh, distribution pattern of the conflict it isn't a correct random i have gone to this uh, distribution pattern of conflict on the seasonal basis maximum numbers of leopard human encounters were uh, recorded from the agro farms although these numbers are increasing during winter season followed by summer season and then monsoon in the case of open well maximum cases almost uh, all these three uh, columns are showing equal number of data but just definitely the uh, event difference of five cases matters a lot 55 individuals were rescued from the well 49 uh, during the summer season and uh, um, 55 during the monsoon season followed by 39 individuals during the winter season then again here uh, entering the human houses uh, has been occurred more during the summer season it is also well understood that uh, the heat uh, that uh, take leopards to enter in the houses uh, in the seek of shelters there were certain cases which were not reported for the uh, conflict driver before to um, before 2005 uh, since uh, uh implementation of the translocation strategy of the problem individual so these uh, individuals were recorded but their exact clear conflict driver was not recorded definitely there is a huge role uh, for uh, personality of the individuals problem individuals which are found involved in the conflict age and sex how these two factors are influencing the level of uh, animal human conflict or human animal conflict i have plotted it on the seasonal basis adult individuals were found more during all these three seasons whereas winter season has produced highest number of uh, leopards rescue for the adult individuals approximately to 73 followed by to 39 during summer season and 196 in monsoon season these figures are followed by old adult individuals where again summer season produced highest figure 59 followed by winter season 44 and monsoon season 40 some adult individuals are there at the third rank where 33 individuals were found uh, were rescued from the uh, identified conflict drivers 
during the monsoon season, followed by 22 individuals, sub-adult individuals during summer season, and followed by the cases uh, approximately 20 during the winter season. Even young and newly born cubs were found too during the rescue operation of levels. As I told you that there were several females, females with calves, calves with the age of one month, one to six months, and six to ten months. There is a huge role of uh, sex ratio in the involvement of conflict. 543 individuals were rescued from the problem sites were uh, male individuals and then 527 individuals were female individuals. And even 66 newly born cubs were rescued too during the rescue operation. On the seasonal basis, females were recorded high during the summer season, although males were recorded high during the monsoon and winter season. Casualties by these large cats to human beings were also reported by the forest department. If I go to leopard attacks on humans, then uh, this line again is uh, you know, shown at higher numbers, where the maximum numbers, 351 were recorded in uh, were recorded during the 2010. These total 351 individuals or case studies which are particularly belonging to uh, somewhere making attacks on humans in the form of severe or uh, say light injury were targeted for the uh, trapping or rescue operations and were rescued doesn't matter how long that operation was uh, going on, but those uh, identified individuals were rescued and were settled down according to the uh, decision of the forest department. In case of uh, line attacks on the humans, uh, altogether 173 cases only, I mean, not, I'll not say only, uh, 173 is also, uh, you know, a, huge number in case of any casualty for human beings from the uh, any wildlife species but this graph this line in comparison of casualties from the lipids to human beings is is something quite low it is looking quite low where uh, maximum cases of these injuries uh, these attacks were recorded again in the 2010 although in the beginning in the 2000 very few cases were recorded by the forest department but again i have categorized these cases in the form of uh, you know severe injuries minor injuries and fatalities by leopards and lions so in the case of leopards the line of minor injuries is plotted quite high where in the 2010 approximately 45 human beings uh, had sustained minor injury whereas uh, this this line has been started more than 10 uh, injuries to the human uh, beings from in the 2001 so uh, on the basis of annual uh, distribution of these injuries from the leopard that that number is again going quite high. Severe injuries are plotting below the uh, minor injuries uh, where approximately six individuals uh, were noticed uh, with the severe injuries by the leopards and deaths were also reported to be approximately three in 2010. From 2008 to 2012, I was present in the beach, so I have observed many cases of uh, these conflict episodes where any human killing was done or any livestock depredation case has occurred. In case of lions injuries uh, uh, to the human beings, the cases are scaled up to 25, where maximum 23, 24. But since beginning in the 2001, very few cases were reported over there. 
no doubt as population size of lion has been increased the number of fatalities number of injuries in the form of minor or severe have also been increased in the entire uh, landscape of key national park whatever data i had collected based on secondary information i had plotted it on the map of the peripheral landscape on the uh, ordinal scale and has categorized as a low and medium and uh, highly affected sites by the leopard human conflict and it has produced southern boundary to be severely in fact in uh, influenced by the leopard human conflict whereas we can clearly notice the spread of leopard human conflict is quite high almost spreading in every direction of the peripheral area of gir but as distance from the boundary of the gir is increasing the intensity and magnitude of conflict is decreasing in case of livestock depredation by leopards the again same pattern has been plotted on the peripheral area which is again showing uh, southern boundary and northern boundary highly influenced by the leopard human conflict but again the northern boundary uh, or northeastern boundary is uh, is influencing uh, in the form of spread of conflict cases towards outer distances in the case of uh, livestock depredation by lions uh, this is clearly showing what kind of heavy pressure lions are putting on the local people predating on the uh, livestock and uh, as well as on the forest staff too but this graph this this map is showing the all boundaries all peripheries of the gir protected area are highly influenced by the uh, lion livestock depredation cases all are showing cases of allocations of heavy pressure which are highlighted by the blue color then followed by a red color and brown color but again the pattern which i had shown you uh, the case of uh, leopard human conflict where uh, leopard depredation is increasing towards the northeastern boundary the same pattern has been recognized from the lion livestock depredation cases are again spreading uh, towards the higher distances from the boundary when the anti swarashtra is under the pressure of lion livestock depredation but uh, 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 as well recognized that distance is increasing the intensity and magnitude of lion livestock depredation by lions is again decreasing so uh, on the basis of uh, above given information uh, uh, i have gone to conflict prevention and mitigation measures which which uh, conflict prevention measures will work well this is a major challenge of you know modern conservation like uh, how to balance the protection of endangered species with the needs of local communities Uh, so resolution of the conflict is an important element of many international and national agencies a wide range of responses have emerged broadly categorized as lethal and non lethal approaches to prevent conflict from occurring to the uh, reduce the frequency or severity of the conflict and these can include activities that are regulated or unregulated and uh, range from methods that require expensive infrastructure or government involvement uh, to methods that can be carried out with low cost to by individuals i have uh, um, i have you know uh, made two sets of these lethal measures and non lethal measures which uh, uh, suits best to my study area uh, the peripheral area of the landscape the first uh, group of uh, these uh, prevention measures include uh, managing the size of leopard population uh i i not talk about the managing the size of lion population because after putting lots of efforts the population now today has increased to up to 700 individuals so i will talk about the managing the size of leopard population because there is a saturated population at the peripheral area of gir 
which live over their survive and produce of springs over there and they are enlarging the size of leopard population at peripheral area and also increasing the leopard human encounter cases on the rescue operation, whenever stress call is coming to the forest department, uh, forest department is, uh, is settling down the rescue operation by uh, setting traps. And uh, sometimes these operations are going on for about um, 10 days, uh, 12 days. But still, the forest department is not uh, trapping the exact individual, uh, the exactly identified individual which was involved in the conflict case. They don't stop this rescue operation. So uh, my suggestion was there, which has been, you know, taken under the consideration by the forest department. Uh, Whatever individuals uh, they are trapping from the peripheral land, uh, uh, there there is some decision for those individuals. Uh, like uh, will they those individuals uh, release in the in the uh, central gear or in the core area of the uh, gear uh, ecosystem, or are uh, these individuals uh, going to be any other location uh, like the zoo or the safari park? So I had given. Uh, the uh, my suggestion or my you know uh, uh, on the basis of uh, collected data um, the prevention measure that uh, those individuals which are supposed to be released in the forestic ecosystem or which are not supposed to be released in the forestic ecosystem there should be a, a fertility control um, scheme so uh, this exercise although is not uh, under practice right now uh, and I, I can say that when uh, it is going to be happen, but definitely this is uh, a very important uh, uh, prevention measures uh, to to at least reduce, not totally culminate, not totally mitigate the conflict, but just to reduce the conflict level between the leopard and humans. The next, uh, which is highlighted on red circle, is framing policy. Uh, for culling, removal, eradication of problem levels, which uh, we all know that it is not under practice in the India. But yes, this is in the practice in other countries like America and Africa, where uh, on, on the investigation, if they found any problematic individual which is involved in any human killing, this practice uh, is taking place. They are arranging the removal of those identified in the individuals. In the big basket, I have uh, multiple options, tighter non-lethal measures for the conflict prevention, uh, which are including understanding, monitoring, and evaluation of the problem site and problem species. First, uh, by visiting the site uh, and by taking intensive observation, what actually has happened over there. Protection of livestock in the villages. Uh, People have been seen uh, very careless for their livestock, maybe in the response of the uh, forest compensation schemes, but they, they don't get bothered um, for the protection of their livestock. Uh, then uh, control of feral animal populations, which is including dogs, pigs, buffaloes. These animals actually mostly attract large cats in the proximity of human beings on the human dominated landscape. And on opportunity, these cats are making attacks on the humans as well as on their livestock too. Permanent shelters for migrant uh, farm laborers. Uh, there is trend uh, for the laborers uh, which are coming from Maharashtra to Gujarat during the harvesting of sugar cane period. But owners, uh, they don't provide them a permanent shelter. So uh, they are living in the open area and the temporary shelters where there is uh, uh, large cats are moving, venturing around. They are living over there and on opportunity, these cats are making attacks on them. Land escape management and land use modification, uh, it, was, uh, it was seen as a very effective conflict uh, uh, prevention measures, like uh, if there is any heavy thicket of uh, 
shrubs or any vegetation so it was advised to the local people please clear out this thicket which is providing a safe uh, site hiding site for the large Large cats where they are hiding over there, and on opportunity they are attacking on the human beings. Education and awareness for local communities, as well as uh, winning hearts and minds of locals, are again two very very important suggestions. Very very important conflict prevention measures, which are under practice. The Sarsangi, all schools are, uh, you know, uh, teaching their students. Uh, guiding the students uh, about the conflict prevention measures and what they should on the sighting of uh, any large cat around them. In fact, in this process, uh, the Gir uh, uh, Forest Department is also organizing uh, programs uh, on, you know, uh, very frequent uh, events like uh, they are organizing uh, programs for this. School kids uh, to make them aware about the precautions and about the awareness and value of wildlife around them. Then uh, at the top, we have review of compensation policies and schemes. Yes, the uh, uh, Gee Forest Department uh, is under practice of providing compensation to the farmers on the uh, Incident of livestock depredation as well as in the case of any human killing or injury. But what are the values of those compensation is of this uh, scheme uh, with level of conflict uh, between wildlife and humans and can turn human minds positive for the species are venturing around them. Uh, when we talk about the areas or the uh, context of area uh, in the sense of wildlife and human beings, so we all are well aware about the structure of the zoning model. We have a course area, we have a buffer area and then transition area. So transition area is uh, is the part of the biosphere reserve where people are living over there. They are they are utilizing the natural uh, habitats, the natural resources in a sustainable manner and living in harmony with nature. But what about the coexistence zone? Where this coexistence zone is existing, which has been highlighted by uh, the IUCN uh, latest definition, the human animal conflict uh, with the coexistence of human and animal groups. And the second is the animal human exclusion zone, which uh, uh, hopefully we will see in the incoming future under the guideline of conflict mitigation measures. But uh, still it is not existing, but yes, government is trying to create coexistence zone. Uh, if I talk about the coexistence zone, so uh, I, I'll again connect with the talk of uh, Dr. Sambit Kumar. Uh, as in the entire Sarashtra lines are spreading, they are uh, depredating on the livestock, but still, uh, humans' minds are very positive for the lions. They never utter even a single dialogue against the lion or the dislike of lion. No doubts how much loss they are bearing in their day-to-day -day life. But uh, the same thing in the case of leopards, uh, people doesn't people don't sound positive for the uh, presence of leopards around. So they don't uh, have positive minds for the leopards, but definitely they have a positive mind for the lions. Because uh, just because of presence of lions, the entire Saurashtra, I say, uh, has been, you know, uh, has been come out with the new uh, modest structure. If I will just go for the example of Sasan Gir, earlier there were no hotels, there were no, you know, commercial setup. Um, uh, that was a very small village, but uh, in today's time, that is uh, a well-structured um, 
Sasan village, uh, where number of resorts are established there, which are facilitating tourism, which is definitely is the important factor for the Gir uh, wildlife uh, sanctuary, Gir land sanctuary, which is uh, attracting people's tourists from the uh, you know uh, tourists of the international level. And the next thing, the Gujarat uh, is uh, the uh, and like proud for having the lions over there in the Saurashtra. So, uh, development of Sasan Gir is a big achievement and it, it has happened only, only with the presence of lions. It is providing a number of, you know, uh, uh, resources to earn their livelihood to the local peoples. They are engaged in the uh, uh, business activities. They are engaged in as a guide uh, in the forest department. Even uh, since uh, the charge of Dr. Sandeep Kumar, uh, he started one more new thing over there that was the involvement of female staff in the uh, forest department. He uh, brought this flow and today uh, uh, the ratio of female staff and male staff is almost, uh, you know, equal over there. And and females are um, are giving highlights from the conservation and management of, uh, um, you know, gear protected area, gear land sanctuary. And the one example I uh, I want to uh, come over here for the Rasila Rain. She is one of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, rescue team member uh, uh, when I was working over there and she used to handle leopards and lions and pythons very easily and today she has uh, become a ranger I think so so such kind of promotion for the female staff has been brought by the uh, Dr. Kumar and yes the female are working very hard they are patrolling the ecosystem during day and night as well when talk about the translocation, so translocation, uh, it uh, it has been implemented in Gay since 2005, I think. So this is the process where forest staff uh, they they start the rescue operation at the problem site and start um, start procedure of uh, uh, attracting lepos which are moving around at the problem site by setting up a bait. Um, maybe they are using goat or any uh, wild prey was killed in the forest by any uh, uh, large cat. So during this process, uh, the number of trapping is going sometimes six, seven, eight, nine till the time they are not exactly identifying the most problematic individual which was involved in the actual episode. But this process of translocation, it is associated with the problems like it includes heavy cost, more time, the death of targeted animal or returning uh, in their original capture sites or continuing their conflict behaviors in new locations. What they do actually, um, during the rescue operation, when they are trapping leopards, they, they take them to the rescue center where they tranquilize them and then insert one electromagnetic chip intramuscularly for the identification that, that has been recognized as the capture mark recapture method. And when the animal is getting stress free, then they plan its rescue on the basis of uh, uh, situation or conflict incidents uh, the uh, magnitude they decide either this individual will be released back in the forest or uh, this individual has to be sent to the Sakkarbag Zoo or to the Devalya Safari Park. There is a Devalya Safari Park at the distance of I think 10 to 12 kilometers from the Gir where that is a you know modern structure of the just where they are releasing those individuals which are being identified um, involved in the sequence killing of livestock and these individuals are living over there like the natural ecosystems and hunting uh, prey individuals and they are uh, getting trained for hunting and independent survival once they are being released in the gear ecosystem. Whatever trappings are being done are being done from uh, such kind of uh, you know locations. Once the leopard is uh, continuously moving around any temporary shelters in the agriculture field, or it is targeting human beings. Uh, uh, 
uh, or laborers are working in the uh, sugar cane farms or maybe the individuals they you know select sites to do rest or hide their crops uh, uh, under the thickets of lantern or any low hybrid shrub uh, around the uh, human houses so the uh, forest department is organizing these rescue operations to capture lepers to trap lepers from such sites uh, one one episode i can uh, uh, discuss over here just uh, uh, when i was in the gi so uh, one boy of uh, of the age of 10 to 12 years maybe i think uh, he used to visit my forest quarter every day in the evening and one morning i received a call from the forest department they asked me to uh, accompany them to a leopard human conflict sites for the investigation when i reached over there what i found that the same boy was killed by the leopard and uh, his partially consumed body was over there and in, in that Time even leopard was sitting on that body was not ready to leave. So such kind of incidents are happening, and that uh, incidents happen from such kind of shelters which is uh, uh, shown in the picture. So uh, these are the factors which are actually uh, attracting, I would say, leopards because once these leopards, these leopards are not well aware. they are not uh, being uh, you know aware about the presence of the large carnivores in the surrounding area what they are eating they are eating fishes and non veg and throwing remains in the surrounding area which is a direct source to attract lepers in the close proximity of um, uh, human beings whatever lepers were rescued from there approximately 84% lepers were released back in the core forest of the area in the jungle rest of the lepers were waiting for the decision making whatever lepers were identified for uh, the involvement of human killing uh, on the basis of uh, indirect evidences from the conflict sites or uh, Uh, say uh, human inter human being interview from this site which has observed the incidents so those lepers uh, are uh, being sent to sakkarbad so in the junagar and uh, uh, at the time of this study certain lepers were waiting for the decision uh once uh, uh, it is happening uh, when they are deciding uh, which individual has to be sent to the sakkar bhag zoo and which has to be uh, kept at the hospital that is again a big challenge for the forest department as highlighted in the picture in single ex, uh, say uh, cage or uh, the leopard block 2 which is highlighted in the picture again such kind of the four blocks are over there at the rescue center and every enclosure with small size uh, was full of uh, lepers which uh, uh, are being trapped from the conflict sites so how long they can sustain that huge number of lepers at, at the rescue center so forest department in that sense uh, has to take decision for their release either in the uh, core forest of the gi or if they decide to send them in the devaliya safari park it is very important uh, this is slide of this lecture capture the cat result from the capture recapture most of the time we hear about like uh, if uh, uh, problematic individuals are being trapped from the conflict sites and uh, their release is uh, being done in the uh, other site like the core area of the forest they are again returning back to their old site or elsewhere this is a big question and uh, a study from atria from the maharashtra she has also put some light on such kind of incidents what is happening in capture and recapture um, practice of problematic individuals from the conflict sites what i found using this data i, I synthesized Recaptures as second timers, third timers, fourth timers, fifth timers, six and even seven timers means the single individual was repeatedly captured seven times. Means the individuals with whatever are being rescued from the problem site and they are being released to the uh, maybe in the uh, uh, core area of the forest. They are again returning to the same site. or elsewhere 
But yes, uh, this was again uh, a question to make everyone very curious what is happening actually. Uh, because till uh, this study, uh, I was not aware about either these locals are returning back to their original sites or elsewhere. Because uh, the uh, lack of the complete information, but somehow I managed to, to draw a map using uh, recapturing of uh, uh, two, you know, combinations, the leopards, which were recaptured uh, three times or the leopard, which was recaptured seven times. So seven timer was, you know, recaptured from different seven locations. Means the, uh, uh, the this strategy uh, is not uh, um, quite strong or it is not as successful as it should be in the case of uh, as a conflict mitigation measure. But yes, still there is a strategy where for the time being, at the time of conflict incidents, people of forest department, they are organizing uh, a rescue operation. At least that rescue operation is uh, is convincing people from that site and keeping their minds positive for the presence of the species. But yes, uh, this is again uh, a research question. There should be an intensive study on the um, capture mark, recapture uh, case studies uh, using, uh, you know, intensive uh, map, um, which is plotting their routes from there. They are being captured and there they are returning back. In the, on the basis of uh, these, you know, capture, recapture, only uh, there were 260 leopards which were uh, tracked from the peripheral area. And uh, these uh, 260 uh, 60 leopards produced a very huge number of the recapturing uh, to up to 834 individuals, means 260 individuals were repeatedly captured for about eight. 134 times. I also share uh, the experience from uh, the first phase of the leopard ecology project from Digi was implemented in 2002 and up to 2005. That time, five individuals were radio collared. Four were men and one was female. The males were radio collared from the uh, uh, Gil forest. Uh, from the, uh, you know, uh, sanctuary area, western sanctuary area. But this leopardess, which is shown in the picture, she was captured due to leopard human conflict from the Taluka Veraval. So, uh, on the, you know, uh, with the mutual understanding or the uh, mutual understanding of the forest department and our team of the Department of Wildlife Sciences, uh, we had radio collared this individual. And what happened next the next day this female was moved out from the core area of western sanctuary to the peripheral area and in the next three days you know she has reached to somewhere uh, at the coastal area of the uh, Sarashtra or say uh, due site uh, where she established her territory and she produced cups twice. She was cited many times by the farmers in the sugar cane fields, definitely. Um, uh, but any uh, attack from this leopardess was not reported from there. People they cited, farmers they cited leopardess with cups over there. They informed to the forest department. The team uh, uh, with the forest department and research team reached over there. But any single attack was not reported uh, from this leopardess on the human beings. So uh, this leopardess has covered on an average uh, uh, 80 uh, kilometer distance, you know, uh, uh, in the, you know, movement uh, pattern uh, where if I I compare this movement pattern with the leopards are living inside the gear. They have very small movement pattern because its home range was also crossing 100 square kilometer. But leopards, whatever are living in the gear ecosystem, they their home ranges are uh, varying from 20 to 25, uh, just enough. And 500, five square kilometer area is, uh, is recognized as the core area of the home range. 
The next important task is uh, guarding and restraint. So, uh, watch over the livestock is very necessary to reduce the level of livestock degradation from these large cats. But uh, uh, it is uh, not being seriously taken by the farmers or local people. So, modification uh, using the modern techniques is uh, uh, is the you know next step. First, they have to be well aware uh, by the use of you know uh, predator proof shelters for their livestock. They are being very careless. Uh, whenever farmers uh, are moving to the fields, uh, the agriculture lands to work over there. They carry the livestock over there and. And then release them free to graze around. And on opportunity, what is happening? Whatever predators are uh, moving around on the opportunity, they attack on the livestock. And in sometimes uh, the attack on livestock is triggering attack on human beings too. If I talk about the schemes which are being run by the uh, forest department, so. Uh, the standard is to provide compensation uh, as for the market values uh, in 2005. I think uh, these amounts were revised, uh, but it's still it is it is looking very low. Uh, so there should be you know some improvement in the compensation schemes. Uh, no doubt, uh, uh, lions uh, uh, lions have been accepted by the local people, but yes, leopard. Uh, is gaining dislike. So uh, these, these, these improvements can, I think, somewhere um, make human beings minds positive if improvements are being done from the forest department. Uh, in case of future research need, uh, yes, uh, definitely, uh, uh, whatever things I have observed till yet, uh, that is like all studies are based on secondary data. Uh, so, a growing number of newly emerging technologies are there, uh, which are sounding very promising to manage conflict. One of them is uh, radio telemetry, and nowadays drone and uh, you know flash cameras are are, uh, are also there, which can be used uh, to monitor conflict status. So, such kind of study using radio telemetry is uh, you know required to. Uh, you know, monitor exactly uh, uh, the trend, the activity pattern, and the uh, intensity and magnitude of conflict in relation of any species. And definitely, if this species is of conservation profile, so this radio telemetry, I think, will work well. Uh, that's all from my side for this lecture. Uh, thank you very much.